So we go to Edinburgh. We get there. I was 19. And while I was in France, uh, I, I was just I was just drunk every day. Yeah. I inverted my sleep schedule. I would wake up at 5 p.m. I'd start drinking wine with my folks. Then I'd go to the one corner store they had in this tiny town, and grab a bottle of rum for five euros, and then drink that all night. And so, Goodbye, tacky, but goodbye. And uh, was like just like trying to figure out what the fuck I wanted to do with my life. I thought I wanted to be an actor, but I was like, this shit sucks. I got kicked out of acting school. And I was listening to Patton Oswalt's Werewolves and Lollipops. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this, I want to do this. Because you don't have to memorize lines. You get True. to say whatever you want. Yeah, I love people, how do you memorize your lines? Like, there are no lines. There are no say lines. Say whatever you want. Exactly. So I was like, I want to do this. I want to do stand-up. So we moved to Edinburgh. And the first time we were there, I looked up comedy clubs in Edinburgh. They have a great one there called The Stand. The Stand. And I went there every night. I just the first time I went, I started hanging out. That first night, I met a guy named Jerry, yeah. who was an American from Rhode Island, who was a stagehand. They have a lot of uh, a lot of theater in Edinburgh, obviously. Yeah, he was the a, stand is on. It's in Newtown, right? I believe so. Yeah, I'm picturing it. Now. I, I, I it's could, on this long road. I could walk there. It's up yeah. the hill, and it's across from the. Uh, it's across from like uh, the botanical gardens or something. There's like a, a park across the street. Yeah, gorgeous park, amazing park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good place to smoke weed. Fuck yeah, dude. They're not high on weed there. Dude, okay. So this is the thing that happened in Edinburgh. Everybody smokes spliffs, right? Yeah. But I'm like an American guy who's used to smoking bowls. So I went and got a chillum, you know, like the the straight pipe without a carb on it. For like one hitters? Yeah, but bigger than a one hitter. Okay. It's more like a bowl in the front. Okay. And I was smoking that and everyone thought I was a crackhead. Everyone I tried to pass it to would be like, oh, what the fuck is that? And I'd be like, it's weed, man. They'd be like, no, roll a spliff me. And I was like, no, dude, I don't want tobacco in my it's fucking weed. It's crazy. Man. And I try to explain to them, they're like, you don't smoke it like that in America. I'm like, yeah. just blacks. Only blacks smoke it like that here. Yeah, we're like cheap hippies. Yeah, okay, maybe. But like, I, maybe. But like, that's a charade, you know, kind of thing. Sure. It's, it's, a way to, it's a way to save money. I get, they always say that it lasts longer that way. It lasts longer. I'm like, just smoke less weed. Take the amount of weed you're putting in the spliff, yes. hit it in a one-hitter, yes. and then go smoke your cigarettes. Yes. What, what do you mean? Although, I do get it now. I, I will do them in like Mexico and places like that. Mm-hmm. You roll them. It's, like, it's just a nicer buzz in a cigarette. Yeah. And you, the, the joy of smoking is nice. It is. So it, it lasts longer means the time lasts longer. And it's like now that I, since I've quit cigs, it's, uh, it's like a nice way to cheat on that. Yeah, right, right, right. It's a nice right, way right. to get a cigarette. I got re-addicted like, uh, in Scotland. Because of the split. I hear Shaw, my roommate, was was smoking all the time. I was like, well, I'll smoke splits with you because you can't smoke a pure, they call it. He's fucking, well, I'm not going to say that word, but like, uh, yeah. not the first podcast we do, but like, sure. um, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I went to afterwards, went to Croatia yeah. to like take a little vacation, go to an island. And, uh, and then I was like, I'm fucking, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm addicted to cigarettes <sighs> from these fucking spliffs. I'll get you. Yeah. I bought a pouch and I was like, I'll just do it here. Uh, a pouch. Yeah. Yeah, so the first time I met, I met, I met Jerry. He's a stagehand, and he was like just like a local at the comedy club. That was his. That was his bar. That was his hangout. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he he would also like run tech for them sometimes. So I'm just like shooting the shit with him, and we're just like talking comedy after the show. And uh, he was like, "Do you do comedy?" And I was just just instant lie. Just oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen years old, just talking shit. He's like, "Oh yeah, in in, in Chicago," and because uh, where I got kicked out of school and. He was like, "Oh, cool! You want to you want to meet the comics?" And I was like, "Yeah, dude." So Whoa. then he took me backstage. I'm like chopping it up, and he's going. Uh, he, I remember introducing the guy and be like, "This is this is my new friend Toby. He's a comic from Chicago. He knows comedy." And we just sat back there, and I just sat no. back there, just talking, just because I was such a comedy that, nerd. Yeah, just just talking with everybody, and then they they closed the they kicked everyone out, and then I was drinking with the staff. No, and then I went there because ev- you're a comic to them. Exactly. So they're like, "Oh, he's cool. He can he's, stay. He can hang." So. And I was, and I've always been until I had to quit. I was always an excellent drinker, in terms of like the, the man, using it to maneuver the social aspects. Mm-hmm. Just really good at, at get keeping the vibe. Skill's up. Skills not done enough. Being a good drinker. It's it's so yeah. important, dude. So you're there at Edinburgh, just hanging out with the guys. That's how you started comedy. Yeah. So how did you go from there to doing it? So I. It's so funny. Lying. A little light. You come and go. Yes. <laughs> and then you're just in. Yeah. You're just that's. So did you start there? Let's check it out. So I 
started to hang out every night. They stopped charging me for admission. I was just, I just got to hang. They started giving me the employee discount on drinks. Oh, I was the only one. I was the only one who drank. Uh, they had a bottle of Jim Beam way up at the top. And I was like, can I get a shot of Jim Beam? And they were like, fucking really? <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> dude. Because they don't do shots over there. The drinking culture is very different. They don't do shots or they do exact pours. Yeah. With the thing with the things actually in there. You can't you can't even like do it like here they do it like that. And then as they're ready to pour, they keep it going a little bit. Yeah. You know? they they raise this thing in it's all these bottles like like this, and they have a thing attached to it. Yeah. And they just push it in it fills up this like medicine cap cup yep. and then that is that what comes out like a like a like a you know a uh, gumball machine it, Ex- it exactly is, it yeah. is the pour and, and you you're like see go it. bigger then they won't they won't but they will if you're the homie so <laughs> so i would so i would do shots and hang out and they they didn't have an open mic but they had a monday night they had the their like new comic showcase called yeah. red raw and it was incredibly hard to get on because it was packed every every it was five pounds a ticket, students, younger people, wall to wall, sold out every week, and it was incredibly competitive to get on because of good show, the, good show, and and the, not a lot of stand up happening throughout Scotland. You know yeah. what I mean? So people would travel from London, from really? Glasgow to do the showcase to the try. Glasgow and Glasgow Stand the club. is one of the best clubs in the world. It's awesome. Yeah, the, it's awesome. the Edinburgh Stand is good, but the Glasgow Stand is like. Is is like it's, it's top it's, tier. It's club. cool. They're right up on you. It's yeah. long and sideways. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, through lying and being a good hang, the booker gave me two spots, a, a month apart. So I got. So the first time I'm ever going to do stand up was in Scotland. What? And I at, at this sold out show, and I wrote one joke. This was five minutes. I wrote one joke. And then I was like, and then I'll just improvise. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that now. <laughs> Dog, for real. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the back way to go on, just drinking, smoking weed out of my crack pipe, chill them, just being like, if I get stoned, it'll be better. You know, yeah. so wrong. <laughs> I get on stage. The lights are so bright. Yeah. No one's expecting it. No one's ready for it. And I've told everyone that I'm a comic. So they all have, there's expectation. Of you like, oh, this guy's going to crush with an American style stand-up. Exactly. That'd be great. Yeah. Exactly. Ari. American style liar. Yeah. I bombed. Yeah. I really? mean, the sweat. I love a cold sweat. I love a cold sweat. Oh, dude. Oh, it's so upsetting to think about. One um, of my favorite things is Kill Tony is if I take that seat closest to the, it's it's flipped, the guy will be here, but like, let's do it here. Yeah. And I'll be this close and I'll be watching him bomb and I just stare at his forehead to see if I can see it coming out. <laughs> like, you can't interrupt for a minute, but I just like want to like see, because I know I've had it myself. Yeah. And then it's just like, you see it get glistening. It's so interesting. Oh, it's the worst feeling. Yeah. I did an Australian accent of this joke and it, to complete silence. And in the back, you just hear a guy go, eh, hey, good accent. <laughs> it's like, fuck, dude, come on. Wow. Yeah, but then luckily, I had another set lined up. Yeah. So then I was humiliated, mortified, and I was like, that is not going to fucking happen again. So then I wrote. For a month later. For a month later. Okay. I, I, I like, How long were you there for this time? Nine months. Wait, again nine months? Yep. Damn! But I missed the fringe. I was there the not, I was of the nine months I was there. So I still I still haven't been to the fringe. I have no idea what it's go. like. I know everyone says. Oh, you're not a drinker though. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's but, a drinking place. I'm going next year for sure. Okay. I, I, I'm dying to go. Yeah. But, yeah, but also it's fun. The rest too. A lot of people leave during the fringe. By the way, because like it's overcrowded with tourists. Sure. I'll sell my apartment for the month for I'll ten make a times bunch of money. whatever, and I'll go to the Highlands. I'll go vacation. Yeah. So. I like worked on this set and it went well. Yeah. Uh, the mistake I made this time. Yeah. Was a different mistake. I had my buddy film it. I like one of those. Remember those flip cams? Like before cell phones had video cameras. Like the little, like the, the little like handheld ones that you flip. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of held it. It's not a GoPro, but it's it's like it yeah. was the, it was the predecessor. Uh huh. So we uh I did that. I had my buddy film it. No, you have your second set. I deleted it. Uh-huh. What? It might be it might be somewhere. How'd you do? 
pretty well. Okay, I was gonna say like worse. <laughs> no, 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 no. It went, it went good. It was uh, everyone was stoked afterwards. They were like, oh, so much. They were like, all my homies were like, thank fucking Christ, dude. Like we thought, we you, thought maybe you sucked. Yeah, but it, but it went good, and it was five minutes, and it was jokes. Wow. Um, but like terrible. But the mistake that I made is I then took that video and I Facebook messaged it to everyone that I knew. Oh, yeah. Like personal met like high school friends. Cause I just got, I'd gotten kicked out of college. Like, so check I check it out, dude. I'm yeah. So, I, so exactly. So I was like so desperate to prove that I wasn't a loser <sighs> and then made it so much worse. Uh-huh. I sent it to my English teacher from high school. Like what the fuck was I thinking? dude? What were you thinking? I, I'm an idiot. I was just an uh-huh. idiot. I was also hammered drunk every day that I was there. Where you been and where you going? This is Ari's travel show, yeah. We're gonna go on a journey today. See what there's to see in this big world. We're exploring different places, seeing all different types of faces. We're gonna talk about travel today. It's 